Hello, Silver Grayscale here, getting back to more Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. We have met with the Dark Lord candidates, Dario Bossi and Dmitry Bil um, Bilyanov, who I tried to make Russian, but doesn't work. <laughs> and it seems that these two, just like Graham Jones a year before them, were born on the very moment of Dracula's death in 1999. So I do recommend saving, because while this boss appeared in Aria of Sorrow, he is not as hard as he is there, but he can still mess you up. Plus, you know, since I'm recording, I want to be certain that I don't have to replay a lot. So we're fighting something with a massive lightning, uh, massive laser beam as the second boss. It's Balrog, or Balor. Players of Aria of Sorrow might remember him as the giant in the arena. Oops. So yeah, he has uh, two attacks. He has an uppercut that will try to slam you into the roof, into the ceiling. Then he has the double punch there. And then he can try to shoot you with his eye laser. Uh, if you are using something like the axe or the falchion, you can uh, get him even when you're ducking. But there we go. The lore is dead. And as you can see, his soul is gray. The lower soul, uh, touch the touch screen to shatter certain blocks. Ability, uh, ability type tactical souls, they are equipped automatically. And one thing that this mod has done is that instead of um, tapping, we can get rid of these blocks by just attacking them. This is how these blocks are destroyed uh, in something else for this game that we will get to later on. So with Belor Soul... We can finally make some uh, well-needed progress and go deeper into this castle base thing. with the souls. They are very stubborn in not giving me any souls at all, apparently. So... Hmm. I sold the knife, so... Hmm, possibly. Oops. And yeah, just so this, this is just this is just punching, which you can do uh, by not equipping any weapon at all. And the magic attack is just 
uppercut for that. There we go, getting up there gives us the uh, foie gras. And then we can just go back down. And yeah, getting that uh, pathway there was the only reason why I wanted to do it with a um, fast weapon. And we have to do it with a fast weapon ne nevertheless. Uh, well, shit. <laughs> Because of the fact that the animation has to um, fully loop with like some uh, sheathing the sword as well. Um, are you serious? Well, we got another Armor Knight soul with that level up. <laughs> You know what? Uh, Falchion it is. And you know what? Before moving on, actually, there's one area I do want to check out. It's a bit off the beaten path. So, uh, bear with me for a moment. Because there was this first area where we saw those below blocks that we couldn't do anything with, but now that we have the ability to go through them, we could check what's behind there. So we just have to do a little bit of backtracking, but that's okay. It's amazing. This game gives me the souls I don't want, but like the souls I do want, the game is like, nah, you can't have them. Uh, it's just like its predecessor. So I was at the top of this vertical hallway. So, if we just navigate through this tunnel that we make ourselves, us to the end of this hallway and now we kind of need an overhead weapon because it touches the ground gives us a combat knife and another mirror That's a good start, and then we can bring back the katana. 
to make a little platform. And then back over with the falchion. Cleave away some ice blocks there. Ooh, this is gonna be tricky. I'm gonna need to... Ooh. I wish the subweapons work, but they don't. So yeah, getting back up here when your movement is kinda sorta limited, uh, it ain't easy. continue on that path but instead do that uh, we're able to build up on that path and essentially using flying armor to make a little platform there and now we're just gonna cleave through here this is where I feel like um, if this game ever got like a, a re-release, like if Konami did like a um, package release of like the DS titles like they did with the GBA ones. Uh, for this game I feel like there should be some kind of like toggle where you can essentially use the right stick like um, how you use the touchscreen in... Um, ZX and ZX Advent on the Zero and CX Legacy Collection for Mega Man. Uh, I feel like that would be a good solution for that, or have like a toggle when you want to uh, want to have essentially uh, touchscreen functionality, or you know, the other one where the weapon breaks the things. I mean, honestly, that would be uh, really, really useful if they uh, if they ever do something like that for like a um, DS compilation. Because like, I feel like the biggest thing that like holds a potential uh, DS Castlevania collection release back is the fact that they don't know how they're going to emulate like two screens. To which I just say, emulate Capcom. Like, M2 did a great thing for um, uh, how Capcom did it for um, the Zero and CX Legacy Collection, basically. And I feel like that. Personally, I feel like that would be like the best way to solve uh, a potential um, collection. To basically have you decide the um, screen layout and then... Um, ah, come on! But yeah, um, as I was saying before, I was so rudely interrupted by gravity. Um, I personally feel like that would be a good way to like solve um, like how um, how to deal with the whole like oh but it's two screens so we're supposed to get that to work on like m most 
single monitor things like the uh, Xbox Series X or the PS5 or the Nintendo Switch or Switch successor or PC. Like, just, just hire M2 like you did with the other two collections and just have them handle it uh, the same way that they handled the ZX games on the Zero uh, Legacy Collection. Basically, just have them do that and it's perfect. Anyway, we have the Garden of Madness here, where we have uh, Unes and Skellerangs. Skellerangs will basically awaken after a little bit after you get close to them. And then they will throw their boomerangs at you. And because it's boomerangs, uh, they will be coming back. So, um, deal with them fast and don't let them throw those. So we have Mandragora. Basically the moment they scream, that's when they do a lot of damage and that's also when they kill themselves. Luckily we don't have any farmers pulling them out uh, this time, so farming their souls is a bit easier. So we can't get any further here because Soma swims. So, new enemy, this is a tree ant. And this is the second magic seal. We've already upgraded to a second magic seal. And here we have the warp room. So, yeah, we're getting a bit short on time, so I figured the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check on our friends here in the Lost Village. And we're gonna see exactly what they are up to for the moment. Maybe there is something uh, new for us to pick up. And then we're pretty much gonna end the episode there. Hey Soma! What can you tell me about that Celia woman? All I know is that she's the priestess of this cult. And the fact that she uh, has the ability to open gates to the dark side. What can she do by opening those gates? Mainly summon monsters and demons. Uh, she also creates zones that draw in uh, that draw energy from the dark side. You'll need a magic seal to close those gates. I see. May I help you with anything else? Well, we have no longer any use for Armor Knight, so let's upgrade our short sword to a Cutlass. However, we need Corpse Weed to get a long sword. And let's upgrade the um, Spear to a Partisan. And we can use Axe Armor to get a Halberd. But that's about it. Let's see what Hammer has for us. Yeah, all he has is just new stuff came in. The new stuff here is High Potion and High Mind Up. Second castle map. So now we have a full access on um, Garden of Madness. And we have 2 1 there for the news. Where you can buy a ba base lard. Uh, I forget if this is the one that can be upgraded. And yeah, he sells halberds. Same thing with the battle axe there. And he sells katana. And he also sells a handgun, because yes, this is modern times. Tomahawk is another throwing weapon. He sells a breastplate, ring mail. And yeah, duck liver paste, apparently. Terror alert! His name is Mothman. So, we're gonna keep those. We're gonna sell the gym clothes. No, we're not gonna sell the gym clothes. We're actually gonna use those. Alright! 
figured I'm just gonna jump up to um, the warp room here and then end off the video. Next time, we're warping back to the Garden of Madness and we're gonna be exploring that place. See you guys then. Bye-bye.